Welcome back to the Price of Business. I'm your host, Stephen Price, talking to you about you and your business. Delighted to have on my good friend Lee Kaplan with Spicer Kaplan and Veselka. They're a great law firm here in town, a really well-known and established firm, and uh, always glad to uh, spend time with him. We talk about different angles. We talk about different things that are happening on the news front that applies to the issue of law. And uh, you always bring great perspective, and uh, always delighted to talk to you, sir. How are you? Great. Lee, tell us real quickly about SKV, Spicer, Kaplan, and Veselka, and that's the website, skv.com. And then uh, you had a couple of topics that I thought were very timely. Let's jump right into it. Well, our law firm uh, just celebrated its 20th anniversary, and uh, coincidentally we were selected by one of these bench, uh, a group called Benchmark, which rates litigation firms, as the Texas litigation firm of the year over some really fine law firms that some are large. They're all larger than ours, but uh, different sizes. There was a banquet in New York. So we're, I think, fairly well regarded. We do all kinds of litigation, including white-collar criminal matters. And uh, we're looking forward to the next 20 years, although I anticipate I won't be working as a lawyer for that entire period. (laughs) One day at a time, right? That's right. Let's talk about, uh, well, you know, we have that, that Houston Equal Rights Ordinance. Uh, that is now in the jury stage. Uh, talk a little, Give a little bit of background on it. Talk a little bit about where you see it at. Well, as most of our listeners know, if they've paid any attention to the media, uh, either print or television, the Equal Rights Ordinance was passed by council, and we have a system in Houston whereby an ordinance can be overturned if there's a referendum. But to have a referendum, you have to have a certain number of signatures, and it's some percentage of the people who voted in the last municipal election. And uh, opponents of the ordinance gathered about 30,000 signatures. Their threshold was something like 17,000. The city secretary initially certified the petition, but then consulted with the city attorney and perhaps others, and they decided that many pages of the petition did not meet the very strict requirements. And we have these strict requirements for a reason, because I think it should be hard to overturn ordinances by referenda, which cost money. And so the backers of the referendum to try to overturn the ordinance filed a lawsuit. A big question was whether to have a jury trial. Uh, And the statutes are not very clear uh, about election, whether this is an election contest and whether a jury trial would be afforded. And the the people who opposed the ordinance wanted a jury trial, and uh, uh, the judge decided they could have one. And I think a lot of the backers, uh, the people who opposed the ordinance, thought that was a victory. I personally believe that it's a poison to chalice and that the jury is going to find in favor of the city that the petitions were inadequate, and that means one more point that uh, the opponents of the ordinance might have had on appeal, one important point, is gone. So even though both sides are going to appeal or somebody's going to appeal whatever happens, I personally believe this ordinance is going to survive because there won't be a referendum to challenge it. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting. It seems that, you know, a lot of uh, critics of what the city has done is saying that it's almost like they're uh, using uh, Jim Crow-type laws to uh, prevent this uh, petition from moving forward. You know, and, of course, the city has an army of attorneys uh, versus the one. Uh, and, uh, and there's a lot of people who are thinking, you know, in Houston, uh, there's going to be some sympathy here. But you think most jurors are going to only focus about the uh, propriety of the uh, petition and not on the decision itself. Yes, I may be uh, uh, starry-eyed, but I think jurors are very, very uh, conscious about doing exactly what they're told, and they're going to look at the exact requirements, which, quite frankly, are daunting, and uh, determine page by page whether this petition has met those requirements. Now, in my mind, there have been some huge tactical errors by the city, I think it was boneheaded to subpoena the pastor's notes for Ooh. sermons. Yeah, and I thought it was kind of boneheaded to suggest at trial that the former Harris County Republican chair had forged his wife's signature, which was more or less the suggestion. 
it gave the plaintiffs the chance to call Mrs. Woodfill to say, that was my signature. I had a child in one arm, and I was trying to sign, and of course my signature looked shaky. So that didn't help the city very much. But I think that ultimately the jurors are going to find that the petition was inadequate. Yeah. You were mentioning another story and uh, with our time left. Uh, talk a little bit about that. There's uh, an interesting story uh, and, a, and a potential scandal, which is that our current Texas Attorney General, Ken Paxton, who won easily uh, over somebody with a famous name, uh, Sam Houston, uh, violated at least the Texas securities law. He solicited clients for a company that gave investment advice, even though he had not registered. He was fined about a thousand dollars, and he calls it an administrative error. Well, there's a, a real question about whether or not he committed a felony. Normally, this kind of thing would be considered by the Travis County District Attorney, which investigates public corruption cases, but. The DA there, who, as we know, is a Democrat and has been embattled uh, by her own problems, has basically punted that and said that venue would not lie there, that the acts are in other counties. And those counties are much more likely to be very Republican than, mm -hmm. than would Travis County, which is Austin. So I expect that our state attorney general uh, is going to fade the heat on that and escape. And... Uh, It'll be interesting to see if, if we ever hear about that again. Uh, uh, the Chronicle might cover it, but I, I think that's now become a non-story, and he should be breathing a huge sigh of relief. Wow. So Paxton, you think, is going to get by, uh, get by because of, uh, basically because of not only an incompetence, but ethical issues potentially surrounding the one who should be taking him to task. Well, I, there is a point to be made about the proper venue for this. If you if you committed these wrongful acts in other counties, it would make sense for it to happen there. So the DA in Travis County, I think, is honoring the process. I think it's wrong to prosecute people in locales far from where they commit their wrongful acts. You know, we often see people in the federal system prosecuted, say, in New York or D.C., for things that really happened in some other part of the country. So I think that's the correct thing to do. But if I were Ken Paxton, I really would be breathing a sigh of relief. Because yeah, he's Lee. from McKinney, Texas, and I don't think he's likely to be indicted in those other places. Lee Kaplan, you can see why we get him on. He brings great insight. Always enjoy having you on, sir, and uh, appreciate it. Enjoy being here. I look forward to the next show. You bet. All right, you can learn more about him at skv.com, and I encourage you to do just that. When we come back, much more for you. Do you want to remind you, best content here can be found over there at usadareview.com, and this is The Price of Business.